Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about, uh, you know, something that comes up with form all the time. And what people don't understand for some reason when it comes to form is that mostly when we're doing certain things with form, we are doing it because we're trying to obviously work muscles harder. Okay, we're trying to do things to make sure that we are working the muscles that we want to work. Uh, we're trying to maybe use a certain technique to lift more weights, or we are trying to reduce injuries. Okay, that's usually what it comes down to. Um, and a lot of times I think people get hung up way too much on when they're trying to isolate a muscle uh, of saying, oh, I need to work as hard as possible to make sure no other muscles are used. And that, that simply isn't necessary. Um, I would, and that's because people maybe take the word a little too literally, okay? Because usually, you know, when we talk about trying to isolate a muscle, what do we mean? We just, we just want that muscle to work harder. And we don't really care what is required for that muscle to work harder. Does that make sense? Uh, you know, because again, we are simply saying, hey, I want this muscle to get as much stimulus as possible from this exercise. Okay. And what happens with that sometimes, I think you can take it so far that you literally start reducing activation of the muscle you're trying to work. Uh, for example, uh, people will take a curl or, or an extension or something and say, uh, because I, I don't want my shoulders to get involved, I'm going to say limit the range of motion and not, and not let my shoulders move at all. Because I, you know, I don't want my delts doing any work or my traps or anything. And, but, and that would be well and good if they were actually taking away from the curl. But when people do it a certain way and then they say, okay, I'm not gonna come all the way up, right? They're not gonna let the shoulder move forward or the elbows move at all. You see a problem with that? Anyone who's, who's looked at the biomechanics of the bicep will say, well, that's a problem because that shoulder movement is part of the function of the bicep. It's not a primary. Right, it's not the main function, but the bicep because the bicep generally will flex the elbow. Okay, that's what it does. Right, it causes flexion of the elbow. That that is what where most of the bicep activation happens. Okay. Right, I think we all understand that. But that flexion of the shoulder is one of the functions of one of the heads because it has a tendon that inserts up there. Okay, do you guys see? You didn't see the issue. In that case, trying to work so hard to isolate the muscle, you are literally skipping some of the fibers in the bicep. There are muscle fibers in the bicep that you have now removed by trying to do that. Well, well that's not useful. Okay, that's not useful. Uh, same thing when people take movements where they don't go all the way down. You know, talk about locking the elbow. Well, that's, that's part of the function of the bicep. And there are muscle fibers involved with the bicep that will not get activated till you get all the way out to full extension of the elbow. So again, in this case, when they start doing that and shortchanging that bottom, what happens? Uh, we're, we're not getting as many muscle fibers, right? We're skipping a few of them, right? That's not good, you know, if you're trying to build it. Uh, you know, same the same thing when we start talking about uh, you know, benching and other stuff, people will say, well, uh, I, I don't want the triceps to get as activated, so I'm going to skip the lockout. But that's that's not really helping you, right? Because is the pec still involved? Yeah. Are there possibly a few pectoral muscle fibers that are required for the last couple inches of lockout? Yes. And if they weren't, people wouldn't bother trying to do cable flies and things. Okay. And can you really remove the tricep from a bench press? No, the, the, the only thing you can really do to reduce tricep activation a little bit is to just grip it wider so that your, your pecs take a larger brunt of the work. But if you grip it too wide, it'll shift more of that to the shoulders because then we're skipping part of the, <laughs> the little bit of potentially the range of motion of the chest and the, and the stretch position, right? So people can overdo these things, right? They can overdo these things or, and they worry about things that don't matter. You know, they worry about things that don't matter. There are many situations to where your knee and elbow position and, and certain amount of flaring and stuff absolutely does not reduce activation of the muscle. Okay? What you need to always think about. when, For me, when we talk about isolating a muscle, I'm thinking, okay, we're picking a, a way to perform the exercise that moves that muscle through a longer range of motion. Okay? That's usually what's going through my head. 
right? Because that's kind of the purpose. If we're tempted to isolate a muscle, that means that we're concerned it's not getting 100% of its possible stimulus. So what I would say to people when you're saying, hey, I want to isolate this muscle more, don't think of it in terms of, oh, I need to make sure no other muscles get, get involved or worked. Because, hey, that's actually contributing to their growth in some cases, right? But rather look at that move and say, okay, how can I perform this exercise in a way that moves that muscle or the joint, the, the main joint involved with moving that, that, that muscle moves? Can I take it through a fuller range of motion? Okay. Such as maybe on a row, extending further down, stretching the scapula further apart, and bringing it higher up to the chest so that you get a fuller contraction. Because a lot of times people will row really low down to their waist. Well, you're technically shortchanging part of the range of motion of that joint to do that. Because they're so busy trying to remove the bicep that now the lats, the rear delts, and the traps may be losing a little bit. They're losing some of their functional range of motion to do so. Same thing, people will avoid locking and stretching at the bottom because maybe again, they're like, well, I don't, I don't want the bicep or whatever to, to do this. And it's like, well, why do you care? Get that stretch because that is a primary function of the lats, right? This is the issue we run into. When you try to isolate a muscle too much because you're thinking literally in those terms, you're shortchanging the muscle itself oftentimes. Again, my advice, if you're struggling with developing a muscle, you're struggling with feeling that muscle, you're struggling with developing it on an exercise, start looking at the exercise and saying, hey, is there a way that I can load the muscle just by changing something in this exercise so that I take, the, take it through a longer range of motion? Because that's probably what you're missing. Right, that's probably what's, what your missing element is. You're shortchanging part of the function of that muscle because you didn't take the muscle through its, its potential range of motion. Because that's usually worth something, right? Not saying every single time is it going to be a game changer, no. But I'm going to say the majority of the time it probably will help. It probably will. Because again, how do we build muscles? How do we stimulate muscles? By making them work. And by removing other muscles from working, that doesn't necessarily increase the work on it. You increase the work on it by making it work more. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.